Now, before we pass out the diplomas, and no, this part of the program is not on your program, um, I would like to call up who I consider to be the keynote speaker of tonight. Um, it is my honor and privilege to introduce, in my opinion, the most resilient, courageous, and positive student in the graduating class of 2013, Miss Emily Day. My name is Emily Day, and I'm up here tonight to tell you part of my story. While most of my classmates here spent their last semester of high school in the more traditional classroom setting, doing a senior project, or out on the weekend spending time with friends, I spent mine in quite a different environment. On January 25th, after a month of nonstop doctor's appointments, ultrasounds, CT scans, blood work, and one surgical biopsy, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, a rare kind of blood cancer with a string of tumors starting in my neck and ending near my heart. Hodgkin's makes up less than 1% of all the world's cancers, with about 1 in 25,000 people being diagnosed in the United States every year. Knowing that I have the privilege to fight this cancer makes me feel kind of special. It's crazy to think how far science has come as only 30 years ago, this specific type of cancer was terminal. Now, with six months of high-dose chemotherapy, possibly radiation, some more tests, and another surgery, I'm hoping to be in remission by the end of September. Hope plays a huge role in this journey. When you go through something such as cancer and the treatment that it involves, there's never a right or a wrong emotion to feel. Cancer is an unbiased disease that will show up at the worst of times. And for me, January 25th just so happened to be the day before my 18th birthday. I will admit to being too drugged up on painkillers after the surgery to realize the full extent of the news my family and I had received. But fear and uncertainty did set in pretty quickly after more appointments with an oncologist, my infusion nurse, and yet another surgeon to discuss the placement of my portacath, a small device implanted in my chest where my chemo was injected. There was no going back. I even remember being angry with myself at the beginning because I thought that my body had taken cancer's side over mine. But I continued to find peace within myself because even scientifically, there is no way I could have stopped this from happening. Naturally, a situation like this is extremely unpredictable, isolating, and in turn, frustrating. But if you talk to anyone who has either had cancer or who is still fighting, they will say that you do what you have to do to get through it, no matter what. Looking back on my first chemo session, I have yet to find the words to describe how it made me feel, both mentally and physically. But I do know that I got through it by eating a lot of mashed potatoes. <laughs> we really had no idea what we were getting into. The days after chemo when my body hurts all over and I feel so fed up are the days when I would do anything to feel like a normal teenager again. Because trust me, a normal teenager should not be allowed to visit Dana-Farber the number of times that I do. Being the youngest one there, I have earned the nickname Little Peanut. Obviously, having a sense of humor helps too. As Bill Cosby once said, through humor, you can soften some of the worst blows that life delivers. And once you find laughter, no matter how painful your situation might be, you can survive it. Now, not only am I able to look back in life about some of the things that have happened in hospital, including a nurse telling me to stay hydrated by drinking a 12 pack of beer per day. <laughs> But I've even been able to find some perks of going through this. For example, no bad hair days. All I have to do is throw on my wig and I'm all set. There are many things that have helped me to keep a positive attitude during the majority of days. 
whether it be because I finally accepted that I can't change the situation or because I'll be two-thirds of the way done at my next chemo round on Monday. Another huge part is the, is the support I receive from my family and friends. My immediate family, my mom, dad, and brother, have been there for me all day, every day, accompanying me to appointments, sitting with me at home when I can't move from the nausea, and offering moral support whenever I need it. My mom took time off from her job, which has been unbelievably helpful, considering I've had close to 100 appointments over the past four months. But besides that, she's been through every single up and down with me on this roller coaster and has become one of my best friends. For that, I want to say thank you. I also have family back in England who have been rooting for me, and I cannot wait to see them again. On May 3rd, there was Save the Day, an incredible event that I will never forget. It was amazing to see students and faculty I didn't even personally know come together and wear the Save the Day t-shirts and Team Emily wristbands my friends on Team Emily had designed. Knowing that I have the support of not only the class of 2013, but also the whole school gives me so much more confidence about the whole thing. As crazy as it sounds, I've lost a couple of friends down the road and had people tell me they didn't believe me. But through those experiences, you learn who was really there for you and you go with it. Because at the end of the day, those are the people who truly care about you, will do whatever it takes to make you smile again and will be there for you when all of this is over. I am forever grateful to everyone who has stuck around and helped because it's made my experience so much easier and our connection has definitely grown stronger. So, as this speech comes to an end, so does our time at Hopkinton High School. It's been an unreal four years that have gone by way too quickly. Through the ups and the downs, we have persevered and our resilience has shone through. Congratulations, class of 2013. We did it. <laughs>